All right, Dan Cochimilio, Low St here with NorCal Sports Network with another video. This time we're going to talk Golden State Warriors basketball. And do the Golden State Warriors have what it takes to win another championship, Steph Curry's fifth? We're going to talk about it right now. Let's get into this. And we want to thank our sponsor of this video, Chapman Law Group. Give Chapman Law Group a call. They're in Marin. Check them out in the description of this video. Any legal needs you have, they can take care of you. Check out and read the description on them in this video. All right, Los, let's get right to it. Do the Warriors have what it takes right now with this roster to win another chip? They're close. They're close. And, and, and I'll tell you why I think they need to add a piece to maybe get to that level. But they're, they're now down to a core of two guys. You know, Clay's no longer here, so it, it's Steph and, and Draymond. They're both playing at really high levels right now. Steph looks like he's 27 years old. He's moving around. He's coming off the ball. He's coming off the screens. He is such a dual threat right now. He's known for his three-point, his step-back shooting. But he's going to the basket now with authority. So he's impossible to defend right now. Um, so he's playing at a real high level. Draymond is playing at a, I want my defensive player of the year back, damn it. I want that award. I should have won it three times. I'm going to force your hand and make you vote for me because he's playing at a very high level. So as those two guys go, you know, the rest of the team follows. They're the veterans. They're the OGs. They're the four-time champions. So as long as those two guys are playing at high levels, the Warriors will, will be relevant. And they'll be contenders. In order for them to be championship, though, and get another title, um, I feel like they just need one more athletic big man. I just feel like when they, if and when they do get into the playoffs and they play bigger teams, you see how Cleveland was a big team and really bothered them. And uh, even Dallas with their two guys that were very, you know, lengthy, uh, they bothered them. They won the game, but if the Warriors want a little bit of a cushion, I think maybe as the trade deadline gets closer, um, they have a lot of guards and a lot of wings, um, and maybe it might not be sustainable, but maybe putting a package together and getting a, a 6, 11, 7 foot. Again, not just a, a big oof that is slow and has no mobility. No, an athletic big man to complement TJD and a young and a slimmer, rejuvenated. Come on, Luke. I have the man for you, Los. I know what the Warriors need. Tell me. And, and I've said this. A couple of weeks ago, I think they could get him. He's up north, residing in the Pacific Northwest, and this man is right there. That's the man that the Golden State Warriors need, Robert Williams III. Remember him in the 22 NBA oh, championship with Boston? Shot blocker extraordinaire. I mean, protects the paint, rebounds. He's, he, he'd be a nice fit. That is the man. I think it's not going to cost a lot. Uh, the that's the guy you go get. I mean, think about what they've got. They've got DeAndre Ayton, and they've got the kid from UConn. Um, the uh, I'm drawing a blank on his name for all of a sudden, but the kid uh, Klingenen, Donald Klingen, I think is how you say. It. Yeah, he. They've already got those two big centers. What what do they need Robert Williams for? This is you don't need three you know, big men uh, in this uh, day and age. So go get Robert Williams the third, and um, I think the Warriors can win a fifth NBA title under Steph Curry and Draymond Green. Wouldn't that be the ultimate if Clay left and they win a championship without Ooh. him? And, you know, we had something the other night with Clay and Steph, and a lot of people were um, saying, oh, Steph's dogging Clay, and this is that. And, you know, you and I have a different take on this, uh, Los. Uh, tell us about your take, and uh, and I'll just say ditto, because we talked about it in the uh, off 
off the air here, and we we both agree on this because we both played a lot of ball with our buddies, our brothers, our our best friends. But yeah. we wanted to we wanted to kick their asses. And the idea that people are throwing out there that Steph and Clay can't stand each other anymore, and they're dogging each other anymore, you know, on the court, and you know, not not speaking to each other during pregame. You don't understand first of all, competitive sports, and second of all, you really don't understand the game of basketball because there is no sport that there is more shit-talking than basketball, like repeatedly, constant throughout the game. You score on somebody, you're going to look at him. Steph pointed at him. Clay did something, and he shimmied. Shimmied, so yeah. He shimmied on him. And you know what? It, it's all in good fun. That is, you know, while, while you are playing basketball, and if you're especially you're going up against a family member or a close friend, you want to beat their ass more than a total stranger because absolutely you have, you have history together and you have a competitive fire. And you know, Clay and Steph probably had shooting contests every day at practice. Sometimes oh, yeah. Clay, Clay would win, sometimes Steph would win. They went against each other in the three point uh, shootout. And I think Clay won one and Steph won one. So they are very competitive. They are the Splash and will always be known as the Splash Brothers. But as yeah, far as when, it, when their careers are done, they'll be the best of buddies again. And, you know, they are best of buddies still. But you know what? When they play, like you said, Los, they want to beat each other. My best friend growing up when we were in Little League and Babe Ruth, and, and but we were on different teams. And, man, I wanted to get a hit off of him more than anything and he wanted to strike me out more than anything and the, and he was the best pitcher in the league okay he was filthy and when i got a hit off him man it felt good you know and you know did i rub it in his face you bet we if i talk to him today you know talking 50 years later i'm still bringing that head up <laughs> yeah i mean competition is competition it's not just in sports Think about if you're a top salesman, a car salesman for a uh, Hyundai and all your best buddies are <laughs> salesmen with you. And, and let's say Kia, you know, recruits you to go work for them. Now you're going head to head with your buddies as far as sales numbers. You want to beat your buddies going to it. So I'm, I'm using that as an analogy that, you know, when it comes to sports, whether it comes to sales, anything <laughs> that you have a bunch of friends or family members or close associates when you're in competition with them, whether it's scoring points, throwing touchdowns, strikeouts, baseball, hey, when you when you pitch for a new team and you face your best friend that was on the team last year, you want to strike them out badly. Look, <clears throat> Absolutely. Look at, look at Otani and uh, um, Trout in the in the World Baseball Classic to end the game. Teammates yeah. for the Angels, you love striking them out. So yeah. that's just if you don't play sports and don't understand that competitiveness, then you see it and you're like, wow, that's not cool what they're doing to each other. No, don't read into that. That's gamemanship and that's yep, competitive. Absolutely. That's all it is. 100% right. And we, what we try to do here in NorCal Sports is, you know, give you give you really good takes, but an insight into things that maybe, you know, some of those people, like you said, that maybe never played the game quite don't understand it, you know, just like, you know, when, uh, you know, whether it be you're in a different profession <clears throat> and we look at certain things and we just don't understand it, but they, they, they understand it, you know, military guys, they have their own lingo that only they will say, you know, uh, certain things that the common person wouldn't understand it. They get it, you know, um, but this back, back to this warrior thing, <clears throat> as a championship contender. It is my belief, Los, that this club is got the wherewithal to do it. And like you said, maybe adding a Robert Williams, especially when it comes playoff time, because you're going to need that big man, that block shot blocker, that, that guy that can come in, set some hard screens, take a few fouls, get the big boards, Maybe not necessarily a huge score, but just an, another element. But the rest of this team, the way it's set up, <clears throat> 12, 13 deep, you could 
go after these guys with tenacity. I said it on another video recently that they can play what Nolan Richardson's Arkansas teams in their heyday when they called it uh, 40 minutes of hell, just yep. all over the court because they were so quick, but they were so deep. Now, the Warriors, you don't see that kind of play too much in the NBA where it's full court press, but you do have a lot of picking guys up right after they come over the half court line and they're trapping. And you see this team this year uh, with the influence of Jerry Stackhouse, lots of traps. Guys can go all out. It's much easier to play a hundred percent, hundred and twenty percent in four to six minute spurts than it is to play a nine, 10 minute quarter. Yeah. And cause most guys, are playing nine to 10 minutes stretch, but not this warrior team. They're going, you know, anywhere four to six, maybe seven. And that gives you a lot more chance to catch your, your breath, your wind. And when you come back out again, you're, you're sharp. Where's the fall off when you go from, let's see, let's say the bench, you know, you got guys like Buddy Heald and Kaminga and Peyton and uh, Pods. And then you got Melton and Lindy Waters. All those guys are fairly interchangeable. So, and then and then you got the great athleticism and length with Wiggins and 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 don't forget Kyle Anderson, slow mo, those long arms. And I really love the makeup of this team. And it's better than I thought when they did the off season, Mike Dunleavy and added Melton and healed and slow mo. I liked it because I thought they're going to go back to defense. The philosophy, the Warrior teams that won championships were always top defensive teams. Yeah. And if you notice, the last two years they were awful defensively, and it was why they were getting beat because there was so many uncontested three point shots uh, from the opponents, and now they're. If you look at every three-point shot that someone's taking, guys are they're closing out even if they're running halfway across the court to get just to get a hand and jump in their face to just upset the timing of the shot. They're tr where last year you'd see guys they just weren't doing it because they didn't have the horses. And Kerr now he's got you see Kerr sees a guy dog it, you're out. On the yep. bench, buddy, or Jerry Stackhouse. Hey, that's not what we're – that's not the philosophy here. We go all out every play because next man up is true in this case because there's several men up. Most teams are going eight to nine, maybe ten deep. Warriors can go 13 deep when they're fully healthy. And that could create a certain freshness going into the playoffs come April because – you have a lot less minutes on your legs for the rest of the year. And uh, that, is, that especially works out for older players like Curry and, and Draymond, who sometimes are beat up during the whole year. I mean, we saw it with the 73 win team. They went all yeah. out to get that record. They burned themselves right. out and, and they didn't have any gas at the end to be able to finish off Cleveland. So, you know, basketball is a sport of attrition. You know, you're running back and forth. You know, it's it's not like soccer where you can kind of lollygag and kind of, oh, the ball's way over there. I can kind of take No, basketball, you got to be running sprints back and forth, back and forth. So to be able to, like you said, just have shorter increments of four to six minutes. Curry doesn't have to play the whole quarter of 12 minutes. He can play eight He's minutes. He's playing eight, eight, exactly. He's exactly. playing 30 to 32 minutes every night instead of 38 to 42 minutes. So yep. that, that 10 minutes per game, again, I, I did this a, a week ago or so, multiply by 82 games, that's 820 minutes less on your legs of playing and uh, less chance of getting injured if you're not playing quite as much. Right. So there's so many factors in that, you know, the people that are against this philosophy will say, well, It'll work for the regular season. It'll get you maybe close to 50 wins, but I don't know if it's going to work in the playoffs. Remains to be seen. Let's see. We don't know. Let's see a yeah. playoff. 26 minutes Steph played in the last game uh, against Memphis, and he didn't have to play at all in the fourth quarter. And the, the Warriors had a, a big enough lead 
and it's so smart. And you know what? I'll say this. And as we get ready to close this video out, Steph is a late bloomer. He's got a young body. Okay. And do you know how Steph, we've read about all his, you know, he goes into these hyperbolic chambers and he, he, his, what they have today to keep the body young and do things to make him go. I don't, he's going to be 37. I believe he turns at some yeah. point this season. I think Steph can play at a high level at minimum three more years after this at minimum. But I think Steph can play past 40, 41, 42, and still be an excellent player because again, young body, late bloomer. And with this kind of depth, and if you're not playing the minutes, as you just mentioned, if he's saving 800 plus minutes a year by playing 10 minutes, let's say he's, he's probably going to average closer to 30 when he was doing 34. Okay. Right. But let's say, let's, let's say five minutes a game. And we'll just say 80 games, 400 minutes, 400 minutes. How many games is that in a 48, 400 divided by, uh, let's see. That's 48, uh, 48 minute game into 400 minutes less. That's equivalent uh, of eight less games a year. That's eight that's, less games a year, guys, just by taking off five minutes from Steph Curry, and if he's playing in only, let's say Steph plays in 75 of those 82 games, but the minutes are reduced, he's really playing equivalent to like 67 games. That's yeah. huge. And Steph has done a great job of transforming his body over the years. You know, he was pretty lanky, didn't have a lot of strength when he first came into the league. He could be pushed around. He didn't do a lot of and ones, but He's such in good shape right now with his trainer, much like LeBron. He just, you know, this is your livelihood. This is your job. So the, 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 the difference between the iconic players and very good players is the iconic players have natural talent, but they work at it so hard. Jerry Rice, great receiver. Tom, Tom Brady, Jerry Rice. Look at the just, longevity yeah. of these guys. Yeah. And, Steph, and Steph has worked on his body. He's gotten stronger, and he's still quick like he was when he came into the league. I mean, he he's – if you watch – don't watch the ball next time you watch a Warrior game and just watch what Steph does going down the court, how many screens he has to run around. And he does that every single time. Then he runs back on defense, comes back on offense, and does it again. You know how much cardio and how in shape you have to be to do that? So to ask him at age soon to be 37 to keep running around like that at 42 minutes a game is not sustainable. So this philosophy – I think is 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 great. It's great for Steph. It's great for Draymond, and honestly, for the younger players too, it gives you the flexibility because basketball is one of those games that some players just are off that night. You know, you could be a really good player, but the shot's not going in, or you're you're mentally checked out on defense because the ball's not going in. And Kerr can pick up on that and say, "Okay, Moses Moody, you're you're not quite there tonight." Let me put in GP2 or vice versa. So to have that flexibility and play the hot hand with the right. role players is huge. Is right. huge. Oops, I just knocked over something there. I forgot to put my uh, my uh, light on me here. I've, I'm kind of sitting in the dark here. Let me put my uh, – oops, <laughs> it's a little late for that. Uh, You're good. But, You're good. Yeah, I'm, I'm, my, my – I just noticed that it was a little dark there and I forgot to put my, uh, my light on, but uh, you know, this thing about with Steph taking care of the body, right? We we've, we've talked about that. And um, let me see if that, there we go. A little more light um, <clears throat> with Steph and Brady and LeBron and let's bring up CMC. Yep. Guys that have a lot of wear on their bodies, but look how young. Do you look at McCaffrey and look? Does he look younger in the face this year? Yeah, guy never ages, and it looks like he's twenty I'm, years old. Yeah, I'm telling you, these guys that have access to the alternative medicine treatments that these guys do, whether it's stem cell therapy to make themselves younger, or if they're doing, 
you know, these hyperbolic chamber things and they're getting, I mean, these guys are in incredible shape. Tom Brady is what? 43 now, 44, 45, I believe 45. No, he's over that. Yeah. Somewhere the guy there. still looks like he could play and he yeah. probably could. He probably could go out and do better than 12 to 14 quarterbacks still. Not not really. all pro athletes think that way though. They're just about, you know, I'll be I have a lot of talent. Obviously, I must have talent to get to the professional level, but I'm not going to push myself and work myself to be great. You know, I'm getting a very nice paycheck um, and I'm gonna be okay with my body. And then the yeah. ones that really invest in their body by like you said, all the things, cold plunges. I mean, there's so many different things yeah. that you do to maintain your body because without a healthy body you're not going to perform at the highest level absolutely period. absolutely and and this last part i want to talk about and we'll get out of here buddy healed buddy healed is reinvigorated and you know what he's a fun loving guy and what better person to get a chance to play with than steph curry who plays with joy too and you watch buddy healed how Happy is Buddy Heald getting to play with Steph Curry in this offense. If you noticed Buddy Heald this year, he's running around like Steph. He's running around, and he looks like college Buddy Heald of Oklahoma. The guy's game is he's going to the rack. He's going up for dunks. I've always remembered Buddy Heald in the NBA just kind of more of a – I always thought of him as like, ah, he's a little – a little bit chunky, kind of just a shooter. He looks really good. And it's, I'm telling you, why I love this Warriors team is Steph reinvigorated, Buddy Heald's reinvigorated. And you mentioned Draymond wanting to win Depoy again. Absolutely. Draymond is the key factor to this team. As Draymond goes, so go almost more than Steph because Steph we know is going to do his thing. But if Draymond is not into it or he's mentally out of it, the Warriors have no shot. Like you said, Buddy Hill's a good fit. Um, kind of ironically, yeah, Kevin Durant left on, you know, left the Warriors because he felt a little slighted that it would always be Steph's team. And Steph was the was the darling of Warrior fans. And I guess he felt like he could not compete. And after, you know, so many years, I think Clay kind of felt that way as well. It's like, no matter what I do, this is always Steph's team. He'll always be, you know, numero uno, number one. And I don't know, maybe there's some jealousy in there that falls into play, but if you get a bunch of guys that know, fully understand that this is Steph's team and understand their role and don't try to compete and don't try to be like more important than him, that's going to work a little bit more. And maybe that's why the clay for Buddy was a good thing for both ends. Clay could feel appreciated in Dallas. Buddy can come in here. And I bet you it works in reverse. I bet you Buddy, you know, uh, energizes Steph. He's got another, you know, hey, Buddy can shoot. You know, those those shooting contests I said about Clay and Steph, don't think that Buddy and, and Steph don't have those in practice that we don't see. And I bet you Buddy holds his own. He has a quick release, and he can shoot right up there yeah, with, uh, with Steph. absolutely. Hey, guys, uh, scrolling up the bottom there, uh, both Los and I do work in the financial arena. Um, myself, I'm in the insurance field using um, some creative products. With, I've got annuities. I've got other products that – also cover, give us a call if you need anything. I will, I've got a product right now that can get you 8% guaranteed. Okay. 8% growth guaranteed. And you can do that and you never touch your principal. You need income off of that or just want to grow your money. Give me a call and I can show you that plus many other things. Um, Los is in the mortgage uh, field of finance rates. How are they doing now right now, Los? 
Well, they've come up a little bit in the last few weeks, uh, but they're still hovering around uh, high fives, low sixes, depending on credit okay. scores. So rate rates are are decent. They're they're yeah. not 2020 COVID levels. Those are probably not coming back anytime soon. So if you're holding out for 2.5 or 3 percent, it's probably not going to happen. So. You know, they're better than they were six months ago when we were in the mid seven. So that's all you right. can ask for. So you know what you might want to do? If you're looking for a home or a refi, give Los a call at Flex Funding. He's at 925-250-4894. My number, I've got a couple of them. I've got the local one up in the corner there on 623-825-3900. Or the toll-free one where you can reach me at 888-960-SAFE, as in... Baseball, you're safe at third base, whatever. Safe. 888-960 safe. Um, meaning your money's safe. That's why it's called secure money. Uh, the name of my company. But uh, give us a call. Get with Los. Get your uh get get uh, pre-qualified. And then when you're ready to go in that house that you like, if you're thinking about buying, maybe it's two, three months from now, get yourself set up and uh you know, you're ready to go. And um, Los can take care of you. He's got all kinds of different finances, good credit, bad credit, awful credit. Give Los a call. He can get you taken care of. Many outside of the box lending programs, um, more than you realize. So, but you won't know unless you contact me and I can right. educate you. Absolutely. So guys, we, we appreciate you being part of NorCal Sports Network. Make sure you like and subscribe uh, by subscribing and hitting the notification bell every time we go live or even when we put out a video, you'll get notified that uh, and you'll be able to watch. We're putting out a lot of video content, some of them in the 8 to 12 minute variety. This one, you know, in the 25 to 30 minute range, but uh, shorter videos instead of, you know, watch our lives too. Our lives are just to keep us, uh, you know, relevant, we're out here with lives after every post game. We're going to cover every Golden State Warrior post game right here on NorCal Sports Network. Um, you know, so make sure you check in with us after each post game, and we'll break down the game. We'll give you an analysis of the game. We'll put up the box score. We'll talk about what the Warriors did right, what the Warriors could have done better. Maybe. Um, you know, each game's a little different, and uh, we'll give our player the game for each. We've got a panel on here that changes. We've got five or six guys here, NorCal Sports Network, that interchange. So um, but watch this video. Give us your comments down below here on uh, YouTube. Tell us what you think of this video. Do we uh, – are we, uh, you know – on the right track? Are we uh, smoking something crazy? Uh, do you think we don't know uh, our stuff, what we're talking about with the Warriors? Let us know. We really do appreciate you uh, being part of NorCal Sports Network. And um, thank you for watching and have yourself a wonderful day.